let's face it, it's not the best time to be a hardcore WWE fan. Okay? Some of y'all have had a really rough go of it the past year and a half or two, let's face it. No more CM Punk. He's been gone over a year now. Seth Rollins, Cesaro, out with injury. Kevin Owens, Dolph Ziggler kind of spinning their wheels, especially in the case of Ziggler, but frankly, it seems to be getting to that point with Kevin Owens as well. And then you wait for guys like Sami Zayn and Finn Balor and Hideo Itami and Samoa Joe at the NXT level, but they're not at the main roster level yet, so you have to enjoy them at NXT, not on the main roster, and they're not helping the main roster right now. They're not helping that product, and you don't envision any of them being an asset or a help to the company come WrestleMania 32. And then you get smacked in the face with the news this past Monday that Daniel Bryan is going to have to retire due to the damaged concussions that have caused his mind over the years. And it's probably, frankly, making a lot of you lose your mind at this point. Be like, what the hell is going on here? It's like you feel like just when you catch a break, you really don't catch one at all. It's like God is pulling the puppet strings and he's just taunting you and dick-teasing you and screwing you. And you're like, what in the bluest of blue fucks am I supposed to do? And then all the while you see what's coming down the pike. And you're really starting to resent the Roman Reigns ramrod of what you anticipate to come. And you feel like the WWE, instead of doing something different and learning from the past, is doomed to repeat the past by trying to make Roman Reigns the best they possibly can, John Cena 2.0. And while I kind of see where you're coming from, I don't fully agree with it, but I can't honestly say at this point in time that I fully disagree with it either. So... You're sitting there and you're wondering what the hell you've got. What next can you latch on to? Who next can you help push over the hump and take to that next level? And frankly, in terms of natural progression at this moment in time, it has to be, I would feel, Dean Ambrose. You know, if it wasn't CM Punk, then it was Daniel Bryan. And now that there's not Daniel Bryan, the next closest guy, the next logical step in terms of a guy that has years of an independent background, years of a following that has followed him to the WWE, who fits kind of that mold, that style of what the hardcore fan kind of wants today, it's Dean Ambrose. You could see where if you got behind him that it wouldn't take as much work, as much effort to help push him over the top as it would with other guys, frankly, like Kevin Owens or Dolph Ziggler, you know, and you can't get behind Seth Rollins or Cesaro right now because they're out of the mix entirely. So you, you see this, and at the same time, you see with where you think they're going come WrestleMania, where they're going in the future in 2016 and beyond with Roman Reigns, you don't want Dean Ambrose to get lost in the shuffle. And while the WWE's done some things in the past couple of weeks, building up to that triple threat match at Fastlane with Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns to where they presented Dean in a way where he's not getting lost in the shuffle, he's actually become a pivotal part of the story, you're worried about what happens post Fastlane and whether or not he actually is going to get lost in the shuffle because you're wondering who is there for him to face, where do you go next with him? And you know what, frankly, it's a valid logic point. And I think in part because of so many of you that have not lost Daniel Bryan, just like you lost CM Punk, you're looking for somebody else to latch on to. The best thing you got right now is Dean Ambrose. And you see what's coming down the pike you feel with Roman Reigns. And you have that fear of what could happen with Dean Ambrose in terms of getting lost in the shuffle. And you think like he should have already had his opportunity, his moment in the spotlight. There are going to be many of you that are going to advocate for him winning that match at Fastlane and going on to face Triple H at WrestleMania 32. And, it, and I don't want to say it totally wouldn't work. There could be some elements there. You know, the WWE would have to work a little harder, I would think, and put a little more effort forth and be a little bit more on point than they usually are in order to make it work. But you could make it work. Dean Ambrose was the last person Triple H eliminated in the Royal Rumble. You go back to the whole story of the Seth Rollins turn on the Shield. You know you've got Ambrose in the mix there. You know, he's going after Reigns. Ambrose is his boy. You know, it can work. But as I've stated before, and I'll stay again, to me, that's not the spot. That's not the right place for the utilization of Dean Ambrose come WrestleMania. I don't think it's his time, and I don't think it's his moment. Wrestling God at WrestleMania is not his destiny. It is not his spot. And it is not best suited for him, and it's not best suited for the company. Frankly, I don't think it's best suited for you. You might want to convince yourself of that reality. You want, might want to make that true, but it's not. And part of my concern about this is, 
and you'll understand what I'm talking about here, even if you don't fully agree with it, is the fact that you know with the WWE, if they don't fully get behind a guy, even if they kind of give you what you want, you're going to soon grow to resent it, and you're soon going to grow to dislike it. And, you know, that's what happened kind of with CM Punk, and that's what happened with Daniel Bryan to a degree. And in part, just projecting to the future, while some of you are focusing on what could come with the Roman Reigns ramrod, I'm looking at what could come with the Dean Ambrose um, kind of uh, half-ass, if you will. And I think there's a very big possibility for that. If the company is not bought into it, it doesn't matter how much you're bought into it, they're not going to go with it. And ultimately, it's going to hurt the performer, it's going to hurt the product, it's going to hurt the company, it's going to hurt the fan base too. I just don't think it's the best option. I don't think you could sit there and go from what you've done to Survivor Series to this point, where still, frankly, everything this past several months is all about Triple H's WrestleMania match, and never convince yourself that it was anything other than that. Praise God! But you've been steering so long in one direction when it comes to Roman Reigns and Triple H. You have to have that blow-off. You have to have that moment. You can't sit there and push it back for the benefit of Dean Ambrose. It's not right. It doesn't work the same, and it won't work as well. It's where they have to go. Whether you want to admit it or not, they have to go Roman Reigns versus Triple H at WrestleMania 32. Now, with that said, though, with that said, though, you do still have some options here for Dean Ambrose, and a couple of options that could help him not get lost in the shuffle, a couple of options that could give him a big featured Mania match that he frankly would deserve, um, and I think perhaps some potentially more appealing options. Now, one of them is not going to be defending the IC title at WrestleMania. I mean, when you just look at the card and you look at potential opponents, what, are you going to go back to Kevin Owens? Ooh, a heel Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. I'm not wasting Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania on this fucking ham and egger wannabe bitch Dolph Ziggler. Period. It doesn't seem like to go down AJ Styles' path. You know, you're not going to go down, it doesn't look like the Chris Jericho path either. I mean, you just look at it. You're not going to go back to Bray Wyatt because it looks like they might have somebody else, something else in store for Bray Wyatt. You know, in terms of the IC title, it just doesn't make any sense for Dean Ambrose to be in an IC title match at WrestleMania. Much as I hate to say it because I'd love to see that belt defended at Mania, it just doesn't work here. It just doesn't make much sense. I mean, what, are you gonna do? what else you got? You got like Sheamus or Rusev? I'll take a pass on that. To me, there are two viable, legitimate options here. Number one is Brock Lesnar. They've done a lot the past couple of weeks to sit there and build the tension, build the animosity between Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar, in part to try and build up Dean Ambrose as a viable player in this triple threat match. And that's exactly what they've needed to do, and the WWE has indeed done that to a certain degree. Now the problem is to me, in part with this, is the way they've built this up, and they've almost kind of shifted Roman Reigns to the background, is they've almost made it seem like they're building towards a Dean Ambrose, Brock Lesnar feud at WrestleMania. And this is sometimes where the WWE can get themselves into trouble. This is where the WWE's propensity for overcompensation can be costly. They will start to send you in a certain direction, and then you start to get to the point where you get hot for something, and then they're going to yank the rug out from under it, and they're going to sit there and not go there, and you're ultimately going to be disappointed. At this point in time, I would venture a guess that more of you would actually rather see Brock Lesnar versus Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania than you would a Dean Ambrose versus Triple H at WrestleMania. So I think that's a match that you could really see a lot of people want to get behind. It would be a big featured spot for Dean Ambrose is facing a Brock Lesnar because, I mean, again, let's face it, this is the dude that main event at WrestleMania 31. Two years ago, he ended the Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania. Three years ago, he was wrestling God at WrestleMania. You know, when we talk about certain individuals, God's going to get a big Mania match, Taker's going to get a big Mania match, and Lesnar's going to get a big Mania match. So if you're working with one of those guys, you're a big deal. You're a main event player for the WWE. And for me, as much as you might say you want to have Ambrose run at Triple H and run at the title, you know, there are fewer matches, in theory, with the Brock Lesnar than there are for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in general. That belt's defended all the time. And the belt's defended, you know, almost every month on pay-per-view. And sometimes on TV, too. And how many times do you get to wrestle Brock Lesnar, period, let alone Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? And it could work. And you could see the dynamics of it, in part, could potentially work. But that's not ultimately where I would go. What I would advocate for at WrestleMania 32 
is that he, Dean Ambrose be the opponent for The Undertaker. Now, hear me out for a quick second. You look at it right now. You know if Taker wants to wrestle WrestleMania, he's going to be there. And you know if he wants to wrestle, because he's the Undertaker, you're not going to want to waste his appearance on some Braun Strowman or any other garbage. You need a worthy opponent. You need somebody that can get something out of the Undertaker. The Undertaker can get something out of that can produce a big-time WrestleMania match. You know, you're still building WrestleMania in part off of the back of the Undertaker every single year. And when you look at The Undertaker in recent years, let's look back since WrestleMania 20. Let's look at some of the people he's wrestled. You've got Kane, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, Batista, Edge, Shawn Michaels twice, Triple H twice, CM Punk, Brock Lesnar, Bray Wyatt. At different points in times, these were guys that were all world champions minus the last one in Bray Wyatt, who probably will be a world champion at some point in time. These are all guys that have main evented pay-per-views. These are all guys that are former world champions. These are all guys that are going to be future WWE Hall of Famers. Yes, it's true. Every single freaking one of them. Imagine how much it would mean for Dean Ambrose in his spot in his career to be associated with some of those names. And you laugh at me if you want. But that's a big spot. That is a huge spotlight. And I argue, even though... The streak is no longer around to defend, which was definitely a bigger deal than the world title at WrestleMania every year. I still argue, because of the lack of general appearances by The Undertaker and the big-time company that you keep by being a part of that crew that has actually worked with The Undertaker at WrestleMania, I still think wrestling The Undertaker at WrestleMania is a bigger deal than wrestling for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Some will agree with me, some do not. I do not give a fuck. It is my perspective and my opinion. Because again, in part, the title is defended all the time. You see the title all the time. Taker doesn't wrestle all the time. You do not see him all the time. So for somebody like The Undertaker to sit there and say, hey, I'm going to work with this dude, you know, the fans know and they understand that that means Taker views them like a big deal. And when you're talking about the gold standard, when you are talking about the ultimate of endorsements, the endorsement that seems to carry the most weight, even though we might argue it's Vince or it's Triple H, in terms of a respect, in terms of impact, in terms of meaning, there's nothing like working with The Undertaker, period. You only get one Undertaker WrestleMania match per year. And that's something that nobody can ever take away from you. So you can sit there and say with the Dean Ambrose, yeah, I want him to win it fast lane. I want him to go on to WrestleMania and win the title. But if they're not bought into it, if they're not invested into it as a company from the WWE standpoint, then why go there? And frankly, based off of the way the story's been set up, it doesn't really work. Some of you might sit there and say that there's not much of a story there with The Undertaker. You'd rather see him wrestle Brock Lesnar. Okay, I can in part agree with you on the Brock Lesnar part. However, you would still think that they're probably going to go with Lesnar versus Wyatt at WrestleMania, leaving Dean Ambrose floating out here in the breeze. And at the end of the day, it's the motherfucking Undertaker. At WrestleMania, imagine again in particular if Dean Ambrose is out there the night after Fastlane and he's disappointed and he's pissed off and here comes The Undertaker and The Undertaker looks at him, looks at the WrestleMania sign and you know what's on and popping like Orville Redenbacher. I mean, I'm sorry. You could wrestle Lesnar another time. You can have a big match between him and Ambrose at some point in time down the road. To me, you could still have a big match between him and Triple H down the road at some point in time. And if you put some effort into it, it could work splendidly and magnificently. But there are so many possible benefits that come out of him working with somebody like The Undertaker, in my opinion. Some of you will point to, well, what did it really do for Bray Wyatt? <laughs> you know, it's a good argument. But at the end of the day, you look at it another year later, who are they positioning Bray Wyatt to work with at WrestleMania? Brock fucking Lesnar. So it could be a huge validation moment for Ambrose, and even though saying you're not getting the title, you're not the number one guy, you might be a top guy here. And it gives you so much more flexibility of what you can do for his character. If he loses to The Undertaker and gets pissed off about it, and Roman Reigns wins, then there's going to be that jealousy, and he could end up turning on Roman Reigns. He could sit there and potentially you know, win his match against The Undertaker, which I wouldn't anticipate happening. Reigns could win, but Reigns is jealous. He sees what's coming. And he turns, it leaves you so many different options post WrestleMania of what you can do. So, for my money, my opinion, 
And I'm surprised more people haven't pointed this out and more people haven't talked about it, at least not that I've seen. The most logical, rational, functional, and optimal choice for Dean Ambrose at WrestleMania is to face The Undertaker. For a lot of people, this would probably be a surprise. And frankly, at this moment, I think whoever The Undertaker wrestles at WrestleMania is probably going to be a surprise. So why not make it a good surprise and make it a surprise that could have some long-term positive ramifications for the performer, for the fan base, and for the company and the product as a whole? So yes, if you're asking me, am I down for Dean Ambrose facing off against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 32? The answer is yes.